This is going to be a weird video, because I feel like we've done this topic before, but never really because of a sample size like this. I mean, last year we made a video talking about this guy and what we learned after one prospect showcase game, so maybe this is not all too far-fetched of a video topic to explore. But today we are talking about the Montreal Canadiens' first overall pick from 2022, Uri Slavkovsky, and what we had learned about him from this preseason's worth of play. Now, to get this underway, I will acknowledge that there were some conversations heading into the preseason saying, oh, the Canadians need to send him down, send him to Laval, have him play a year in the AHL because he wasn't ready in the NHL last year. A year in the AHL would be fine because Shane Wright is going to the AHL, so it's okay if Slavkovsky goes there too. And then people were talking about Logan Cooley and how that was such a great pickup at number three, especially compared to Slavkovsky, and we had our few conversations and videos about how it doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, it does matter, but like, it's not really worth talking about, in my opinion. Mostly because we're so close to the 2022 draft, it's only been a year and a bit. But for Yuri Slavkovsky, what I really wanted to focus on was one of the final preseason games the Habs played in this selection. A comeback win against the Ottawa Senators, where Slavkovsky was placed on a line with Kirby Dock. In fact, Slavkovsky got everything started in this game, as he was able to score the first goal 30 seconds in. The puck was fired on net by Mike Matheson, and the rebound popped out to Slavkovsky, who is crowding the middle, and he's able to put the rebound right through the five-hole of Mad Sogard. This was a pretty good game, and in fact, if you take a look at some of the analysis done by certain scouts, this is what Hattie K went out there and said on Twitter, Yuri Slavkovsky has impressed me more in the last two periods than he has in the last year combined. His execution is on point. He's getting a lot more little details done correctly. Now, what exactly is Hattie referring to? Well, to help us out, let's go over onto Eric Engel's article from the same night of the game, so October 7th, 2023, talking about the Canadians' takeaways from this showcase. Slavkovsky adapting, Suzuki hot in the dot, Shakai tearing twine. Yeah, Arbor Shakai shot a puck that went right through the net, literally through the net. It was in, and then it popped out right through the twine, tearing it apart. That's crazy to see. But for Uri, I wanted to go out there and read what it is Engels writes about him, as well as some of the quotes included from Martin St. Louis about this entire thing. Link is going to be in the description if you want to read the entire article. It's from a few days ago. It analyzes the game. It goes over Suzuki and a few other things. But the article does open up by talking about how Slavkovsky scored the opening goal. He executed by pivoting more towards the slot, leaving Sogard partially blind to the incoming shot from Matheson. The gigantic Dane made a last-second reaction save and lost a hold of the rebound. That's when Slavkovsky went through the legs to open the scoring for the Habs. It was Slavkovsky's first shift of the game, started out with him smiling at Kubalik, who was lined up across from him on the opening face-off, and it ended with him grinning even wider as he celebrated his second goal of the preseason. The article then dives into how Slavkovsky played this game. He was a consistent presence on the forecheck and backcheck. He used his body effectively, and for more than just setting screens, both taking checks and dishing them out. He made strong plays in his own end and creative ones in the offensive end, and he put himself in the right spots at the right time to have the puck on his stick frequently. Now this is great, because when it comes to Slavkovsky, one of the biggest things that plagued his game last year was his ability to get hit. Because quite frankly, it was just not good. Slavkovsky was getting knocked over by small guys like Marco Rossi. They were getting the better of him, because his head was always down and he wasn't paying attention. Nowadays, seeing how he's performing in the preseason, I'm not going to say that he's some terrorizer Brady Kachuk-like player, but... He's a lot closer to Brady Kachuk today than he was throughout any point last season. Martin St. Louis went out there and said this about Slavkovsky. He played a good game tonight, and he's starting to learn the game a bit more. We talk about being connected and balanced on the ice, and he appears encouraged because he knows that the game is easier when it's played with the four guys on the ice. Big guys like Slavkovsky use their size and abilities individually until they reach the NHL, and then realize it becomes impossible to do it all by themselves at this level. You have to understand to play with the other four players on your side and the five on the other team. Slavkovsky is advancing in that process, and he exhibited that throughout this training camp. Now he must take the confidence earned from it and carry it into the regular season. So for a player who has been so under the microscope the past year and a bit, for a guy that was not supposed to be first overall, but then he was because he had a great Olympic Games and World Championship showcase, for a guy that was able to dominate those levels of play and come into the NHL as the experiment that he was, 
This is what he needed. A preseason training camp like this, where all of a sudden, he's not looking like a number one overall pick kind of guy. But for a player who is 19 years old with the physical tools that he has, and the progression you saw from last year to this year, he certainly is a player on the rise. And there is no telling really as to how high that ceiling could go. It's only been one year development, but as the common NHL tale says, players who are rookies normally exhibit that sophomore slump. So the question really is, where exactly does Slavkovsky go points-wise, and what are your expectations? Slavkovsky last year had 10 points in 39 games played on pace for about 20-something points, and if you go over to the Canadian subreddit, there was a post made a few days ago by Mag Liv Pinch asking, point-wise, what would you consider as successful for Slavkovsky this season? For my part, a successful season would be 35 to 40 points. It seems attainable. It would prove he can put up points, and I think it would relax a lot of anxiety from the fans. What about you? You then have a bunch of comments. Some say they don't really care about the points. Others care more about the development and the confidence. Some people are saying 30 points, 35, maybe 40 plus would be great. But at the end of the day, for Slavkovsky, I feel like this isn't really the type of player that you're going to see immediate game-changing point production out of right away. He's got a lot of finer details that need to be worked on and perfected at the NHL game before he worries about points. Now, of course, you could say, oh, but if he scores like 70 points in a season, who cares how good he is as a player? Yeah, that's true. If he does go out there and do that, I definitely wouldn't complain. But the way we have seen him progressing definitely isn't bad. So for Slavkovsky to look as confident as he did in the preseason, as competent in the little details, the finer elements of the game, in terms of where he's positioning himself in the offensive zone, how he's screening guys, he's using his body to shield the puck, and how he's able to traverse around the offensive zone, feed off the players that are teammates of his, ultimately improving his overall team-oriented game, this is a guy that if he's able to unlock everything and bring together those skills that made him such a valuable prospect in 2022 in the first place, if he's able to use his shot a little bit more, score some more goals, and do this all at the ripe old age of 19 years old, then there really is no telling as to what could happen next, you know? So I feel like for Slavkovsky, even though he's never going to be like Jack Hughes, Connor McDavid point production, I don't think he's ever going to get 100 points in a year. If he is at least able to be a serviceable player that does things that nobody else is capable of doing, if he uses his size, he uses his skill, if he maxes out at, let's say, 80, 85 points in an NHL season in his prime, I feel like that's an alright player, especially at first overall. He doesn't need to be a 100-point superstar to be labeled as a worthy first overall pick. Now, for sure, you could say if somebody else like Logan Cooley, for example, gets 100 points, and oh, why would you say that he's not supposed to be first overall? Well, because Cooley's a lot smaller. He doesn't have the same tools. He doesn't have the same details that Slavkovsky is capable of achieving with his frame, with his play style, and with his tendencies. So... What we learned, ultimately, was that there is a very positive step in the right direction that came to us in the Ottawa game and that showed itself off briefly throughout training camp and the preseason. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I get that a lot of non-Canadians fans can watch this video and say, oh, look at that. Lego's just really inhaling the copium at this point, trying to rationalize the Yuri Slavkovsky pick. And to that, I say, calm down, guys. It's only been a year. We'll see what happens in two, three, four years. Hopefully, I'm still making videos by then, and we can actually catch up with how everything went and gone from that 2022 draft. It's going to be so interesting to make the 2022 redraft video in a few years, because that is going to have some very good controversy attached to it. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below about Yuri Slavkovsky. Article is going to be linked in the description, as well as the Reddit post. I hope you enjoyed this. Vidisha Shrolls 99. And bye.